All right, guys, let's talk updated tournament bubble picture as of Thursday, March 7th. At the moment, these are the last four buys I've got at the moment. This is going to change all throughout the next week and a half. All right, I'll try to put out an updated video every day over the next week and a half as we get into conference tournament play. But at the moment, I think there's about six bubble spots open with about 25 teams fighting for those spots. At the moment on your screen, Michigan State and Mississippi State, I think they're locks right now. Michigan State has a lot of talent. They have some good wins. Mississippi State doesn't really have any bad losses. FAU, let's go ahead and talk about them. All right, I think they're trending towards being in for sure. Uh, have really good wins over Arizona. All right, That's a really good win right there over a one seed. And they have that run last year to kind of back up their resume all right, to give you hope that if we do let them in, they're capable of making a run. They also have wins over other bubble teams, Butler, Loyola, Chicago, and they've got losses to Illinois. That's a good loss. And then in conference to USF and Memphis, which are kind of on the bubble as well. But one of them, unless Charleston does, is going to have to win the American Conference. So one of them is going to be in already. And it, right now I've got that as USF, but it could change. Then the other last four by, we've got New Mexico. All right, they've trended up tremendously over the last couple of days. Uh, I didn't have them in my tournament last time. They're in now comfortably in the four buys. So obviously they'd be like the 10 seed, for example. Uh, it's going to really come down to what does the committee think of the Mountain West? All right, they've got a lot of good wins in the Mountain West, San Diego State, Utah State, Colorado State, which I have as tournament teams right now, and then over Louisiana Tech, which is currently first in their conference. And they have good losses out of conference, for example, to St. Mary's, which is a good loss, and then in conference to Boise State, which is another team. And the Mountain West is capable of putting seven or eight teams in the conference, depending on what the committee thinks of them. All right, so looking at the last four in, let's go ahead and pull this up. At the moment, I've got Seton Hall, which is capable of moving up, depending on how they do in their tournament. Indiana State, so Indiana State and Drake can kind of swap. At the moment, I've got Drake winning the conference. And then Appalachian State, similar situation. They're basically in a play-in with James Madison for the winner, obviously getting an automatic qualifier. I've got James Madison winning right now, which would put Appalachian State back on the bubble. And then UNLV. All right, we'll get to them in a second, but they're trending up as well. All right, so Seton Hall sitting at 19 and 11, wins over Marquette, UConn, Villanova. Those wins over Marquette and UConn is really going to help Seton Hall. I don't see how they don't get in because nobody else can really say they've beaten UConn that's as far as in the bubble conversation. And then that win over Marquette's huge too. And then Villanova as well. That's another team on the bubble that they're kind of fighting with for that spot. I think with all these Big East teams on the bubble, it's going to come down to what do they do in the Big East tournament? Who ends up making a run? Who ends up dipping Marquette is probably what's going to get you in the tournament. Uh, then they've got losses to Creighton. Tournament team, Baylor tournament team, Iowa, another team on the bubble. But Seton Hall, I think, has a chance. If they can reach 20 wins, I think they're fine. All right, next up, Indiana State. Like I said, they're kind of in conversation with Drake. All right, one of those is going to win the conference. Ideally, they need to both make the championship in their conference tournament, play mm -hmm. each other. Now, Drake does have the better resume mm -hmm. if you're looking at it. But Indiana State went over Toledo. They're currently first in their conference, or first or second. And then you got to reward them for playing out of conference play, tough non con. Uh, played Alabama, lost to them, lost to Michigan State. Those are two tournament losses. And I think you got to give them the benefit of the doubt there uh, just for scheduling tough out of conference. Now we'll see. Sometimes the committee likes to go with the teams that are power five, but closer to 15 losses rather than going with the mid majors. Hopefully they give the mid majors a little love this year because there's some, actually some really good bubble teams. Like, like I said, Indiana State or Drake, either way, I think the loser's in. Next up, Appalachian State. Similar all right, situation for them, but with James Madison in the Sun Belt. Uh, App State beat James Madison twice in the regular season. They're going to probably match up again in the tournament. Uh, James Madison only has three losses. At the moment, I've got James Madison beating them in the tournament. Tough to beat a good team three times. Uh, but Appalachian State, sitting at 26-5, and five, I think has the better resume than James Madison if it comes down to the bubble. Uh, so in this one, obviously, James Madison's already in automatic qualifier, then Appalachian State makes the bubble. That win over Auburn is going to come into play really big for them because uh, Auburn's a really good team and a tournament team. So hopefully Appalachian State can get the bubble and make the last four in. All right, and then last on the last four in, UNLV. All right, another team that was not in my tournament last time. Uh, Mountain West is trending up. All right, so again, this is going to come down to, similar with New Mexico, what does the committee think of the Mountain West? All right, I didn't have them in as of 24 hours ago, but things have changed since then. All right, they've got wins over San Diego State, tournament team, Boise State, tournament team, Colorado State, tournament team, New Mexico, I think a tournament team, and then Creighton, which is a really big win there. 
I have got losses to Richmond, which I have as a tournament team currently winning the A10. Uh, St. Mary's, that's another good loss. Nevada, that's a tournament loss. Utah State, a top 25 loss. So UNLV's actually got a really impressive resume, and I think they're in. Uh, now, obviously, things can change. 19 and 10 isn't a lock. All right, nowhere close. I think you need to go on a pretty good one in the, run in the Mountain West, maybe dip three of those Mountain West teams that are in the tournament. And I think that can catapult you in. But, again, it's going to come down to what do they think of the Mountain West, talking about the selection committee. Uh, what do they think of the Mountain West? And if they are high on them, we saw they had San Diego State ranked in the first ranking. They had them in the top four seeds. Uh, if they're still high on them, then look out for UNLV in New Mexico to make the tournament. All right, next up we have – all right, first four out. We've got Providence, Utah, Memphis, and Virginia. Let's talk about them. Providence, 19-11, and 11, wins over Creighton, Wisconsin, and Marquette. Mm -hmm. Providence has a really good chance of getting in the tournament, depending on what they do in the Big East tournament. I think they have a really good shot of getting in. Losses to UConn and Oklahoma, those are good losses. Uh, Providence, again, all these teams that are kind of Big East teams mm -hmm. that are in the same situation, Providence, Seton Hall, Villanova, St. John's, they've all kind of beat each other. So it's going to come down to probably who performs best at the end in the Big East tournament. Next up, Utah sitting at 18 and 11, wins over Wake Forest, St. Mary's, BYU, Washington State, Colorado, and Oregon. St. Mary's, BYU, Washington State, all tournament teams, and then Wake Forest, Colorado, Oregon on the bubble. They played tough out of conference. You got losses to Houston and Arizona. Uh, Arizona's a in conference, but Houston really should help boost their resume having a loss there. And then a loss to St. John's, which could come into play if them and St. John's are kind of head to head. Uh, you got to value head to head a little bit if you're comparing resumes, which would give St. John's the edge there. All right, next up we have Memphis. All right, I had Memphis in my field last time. I've bumped them out at the moment, uh, sitting at 22 and eight. Memphis is kind of a weird team. They can beat some good teams, they can also lose to some bad teams. All right, for example, they were down like 20 to UAB in the first half and then ended up winning by 20 the other day. Uh, wins over FAU, that's a tournament team. And Clemson, another tournament team, and then wins over the bubble squads, Virginia, Texas A&M, VCU, losses to USF, Ole Miss, and Villanova. Memphis is going to need a really good run in the AAC tournament. If they can make a good run to the championship, I think they're in, uh, but they're going to need a good run, need a little help over the next week or so. Next up, Virginia. All right, wins over Clemson, A&M, and Florida, all pretty good wins. Clemson and Florida tournament teams, 21-9. Uh, they haven't lost a lot of games, so that is good for Virginia, but they've looked pretty bad over some of these games on offense the past few games. Not really many bad losses looking down there. All right, North Carolina, Duke, Wisconsin, and Memphis. Uh, Memphis, obviously another bubble team that's on that conversation, but I think Virginia has a chance, but they're going to need to make a run. Also, they need to beat Georgia Tech this Saturday, and Georgia Tech has been piling up the quad one win, so they could be Virginia. All right, next four out, we have Colorado, Villanova, Butler, and Ohio State. Our right, Colorado, 20 and 9, similar to Virginia as far as the losses and wins are concerned. Wins over tournament teams, Washington State, Utah in that bubble conversation, Oregon in the bubble conversation. Then you got Richmond, also in that bubble conversation, but are currently leading the A-10, so I've got them in the field right now. And then losses to Colorado State and Arizona. All right. Uh, Colorado, a lot of wins. They have a lot of potential. They're a pretty talented roster, so that could get them in because they are pretty talented. You know, they might could go on a run just off of, you know, the ability of a few of their players. So Colorado, watch out for them. If they go on a run in the Pac-12 tournament, they should be fun. All right, next up, Villanova. All right, bad loss of the day. Not a bad loss, but bad timing is what I want to say. 17 and 13, but they have a lot of good wins, okay? But the question is, how many losses can you pile up before we have to actually admit, hey, you got a lot of losses. You don't deserve to be in the tournament. But with that being said, they do have wins over North Carolina, Texas Tech, both tournament teams, North Carolina, two seed, Memphis, and Creighton. All really good wins there. Losses to UConn and Marquette, those aren't bad losses. But to get to 13 losses, you do have to have some bad losses. So Villanova isn't helping themselves at the moment. Next up, Butler. All right, similar. They're in the Big East. All right, this is another team. Like I said, it's going to come down to the Big East tournament who makes a run, I think, is what's going to separate these teams. But wins over Creighton, Boise State, Texas Tech, and Marquette. All right, Butler, really good resume here. Losses to UConn and FAU, but similar situation to Villanova. They just have too many losses to not tournament teams. If they had a few less losses, both these teams would be tournament locks right now because they actually have some pretty good wins. All right, and last but, not, last but not least here, Ohio State. They're trending up right now. All right, they've done really good since they fired their coach, sitting at 18 and 12. 
I've moved them above Iowa as far as being on the bubble. The thing that separates Ohio State is these really good wins right here. Purdue and Alabama. All right, that's going to come into play whenever you're having these bubble conversations because Ohio State has proved they can beat anybody. Uh, if they can beat Purdue and Alabama, they can play with most teams. They also have one over Michigan State. Losses to Illinois, Wisconsin, and Northwestern. So when comparing them in Iowa, for example, Iowa's best wins are probably Northwestern and Nebraska, I think, uh, are their best wins. So Ohio State, in my opinion, is above them at the moment, as well as a bunch of other teams. You know, St. John's is another one that's on the bubble. But Ohio State is trending up. If they can go on a run like they did last year, they've made it, uh, I think, the Big Ten Championship and lost. If they can do that again, they should be in. But – at the moment, like I said, as of Thursday, March 7th, this is my current bubble picture. Let me know yours. Who do you think will make the field? Who is your last four in the tournament? Who are your first four out? Who wasn't on this list that needs to be on this list? Let me know. Comment down below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe.